Good morning, Bears. If you missed Zoom, this is your place for your lesson. Or if you're in Zoom, we're going to dive into this lesson right now. We got a busy week. It's a science week. It's about super spiders, super web, like Spider-Man, and super people, some of who we have in this class. As a matter of fact, you're all super. You know why? Because every single person in this class, actually in the world, 1,000% unique. There's not, even if you're an identical twin, you're not identical. You're still unique. All those DNA, all those little differences, all those little modifications coming from your mom, your dad, and passed down from ancestors way back into the past, all are part of you. So fascinating stuff. But we're focusing on spiders first, and then we'll get to the super people on Thursday, and we'll share with some of the different kind of traits and super abilities and unique um, traits that people have due to some of the DNA changes that people have, whether it's the color of the eyes or our, our, our brain or our physical features, different things like that. We'll talk about that on Thursday. All right, let's get into this. We, I have shared the slideshow with you. It's called Super Spiders and Super People. Remember, this is DNA and Traits Week. This comes from reproduction. When a man and a woman, boy and a girl, spider, dog, or human being come together to create babies, they pass down their DNA. You will learn more about that in detail in seventh grade. Right now, we're at the molecular level, the cellular level. These are cells right here. So let's get rolling and get to our activities for the day. Now, pay attention because you will need to take some notes and we will be creating a top slide. You will also share in groups and you will be filling out a form based on the information. So focus in. Here we go. Remember that we are investigating differences in the silk flexibility trait of a spider family. In the previous lesson, we investigated differences in traits by observing the cells of different spiders in the sim. Today, we will be investigating this question. What determines an organism's traits at the molecular scale? To understand where an organism's traits come from, we are going to zoom into cells to see what is happening at a molecular scale. Remember, molecule, we learned about this earlier. Tiny, can't see it. Molecular scale means the size of molecules. Molecules are the tiny structures that make up cells. Next, you will read a short article from a set called Surprising Spider Silk. Check with your teacher about how you will access I'll access it for you if it doesn't work. You can go find it on your own. But if, as long, if you're watching this video, just do the read aloud. Follow along with the video. Sometimes these don't work. We have read this article already quickly. Now we're going to dive in deep called Close Reading. The article you are reading today is in the article set. It has five parts. These articles will help you understand some of the important things that scientists already know about variation in spider cells. Now remember, variation just like people have variations, so do spiders. How will you use these guidelines? We've reviewed those before. Pay attention. Look at visuals. Close read. Think about definitions. Read and annotate chapter one, different silks for different functions, and one other chapter of your choice. Now, remember, if you can get in there, you can highlight text and things like that. We are going to do a breakout room after we read this. You, I'll leave the text on the screen, and you can either copy... If you know how to get in here, you can copy and paste, or you can just look at the screen and write down what you see, and or you can paraphrase, put it in your own words, after the breakout room. So we will be creating a top slide after this article and taking two notes. So pay attention. This link will take you into activity pages. If you know how to get to Amplify Library, then that's where the articles are, and you all have access to Amplify, but you do not need it for today. Let's check this out. You'll need a partner to talk with. You and your partner will discuss your annotations following the instructions on the next slide. And here we go. Prepare to share. We know about that. The protein molecules that make up the spider silk allow the spiders to do many different behaviors that can increase the odds of survival and reproduction. These behaviors include what's catching prey, moving, and protecting their eggs and young. We are going to look for evidence of that in the article. I will give you more details after we read it. Now, these slides, I think we're going to start moving them to the top. So anytime we have a concept, like a history week, this is a concept. A lot of you guys do this on your own. Let's move them to the top. So right now or later, you can just throw that up to the top. And then, of course, you have to remember where you were. I believe it was right around here. 
There, these are, there are proteins that help reactions occur inside cells. Other proteins store nutrients to help move molecules. Overall, proteins play an important role in keeping an organism alive. This model of a protein looks different than the model in the sim. It shows the more realistic three-dimensional shape of a protein. Just give it, then we're gonna, you just read about the, you just read, okay, there's your just read. So now it's time to go read. We're in slide 15. So when you move these to the top, it's up to you how much you want to work on them. It definitely helps if you have extra time. Find a picture, write your own, you could write a CR, maybe your own word on it. You could reorganize the slide just like we do in history because it's just building our protein, I mean our vocabulary. So protein molecule, a type of large molecule that performs important functions inside organisms. And remember, we talked about functions and structures and we will review that in a minute. Well, let's get to our article. So after this article, you are, I'm going to leave a section of the article on the page. You are going to create a top slide, and I will guide you through what I want. You're basically going to take two notes about protein molecules. We're going to look for information about protein molecules, how, how they impact silk. So as we read this article, pay attention. Let's do it. Just follow along on the screen. Surprising, Surprising spider, spider silk. silk. Chapter, Chapter one, one, different, different silks for different functions. Deep inside the body of a spider, specialized cells produce protein molecules that are much longer than ordinary protein molecules. These long protein molecules connect to form an amazing material, spider silk. Spiders use their silk to build strong webs, to trap bugs, to save themselves from falling, to wrap their eggs safely, and even to glide through the air. How can one material, spider silk, be used for so many different functions? Different uses for spider silk are possible because not all spider silk is the same. There are many variations or differences in spider silk. This is because there are different features of spider silk, such as strength, stickiness, stretchiness, and color. For each of these features, there are several possible traits. For example, for the feature of silk color, a spider might have the trait of making gray, white, or even golden colored silk. Spiders have different traits for each feature because of differences in the protein molecules that make up the silk. The cells of different spiders make different kinds of protein molecules, and these molecules combine to make different kinds of silk. This means that the kind of protein molecules a spider makes for a feature determine its trait for that feature. The spider pictured above makes specific protein molecules for the silk color feature. These protein molecules result in golden colored spider silk. To learn more about some amazing spider silks and the proteins that make them that way, read one or more of the chapters that follow. Chapter 2, Spider Silk for Gliding Through the Air A tiny spider climbs to the tip of a leaf. It stands up high on its legs, tilts its body upward, and shoots out several threads of fine, wispy silk. The wind catches the silk, and it becomes a kind of sail, lifting the spider into the air. The spider glides away under its silk sail, traveling much faster than it could by crawling along the ground. The weight of the spider silk is a feature. Some spiders have the trait for a kind of lightweight silk called gossamer silk. Gossamer silk is extremely light and fine because of the protein molecules it is made of. These proteins make gossamer silk perfect for gliding. The light silk catches the air, but doesn't weigh the spider down. Okay, we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna leave this screen up. So show us in this short little text, not that difficult, share either something from the article before or this section here, something you learned about silk, the traits, how it's different, and how protein molecules are the reason that the silk is different. So just share something you've learned from the article. If you want, you can just read a sentence off of this screen in the breakout room and then just talk spiders it's going to be a quick breakout room it's you might have three people might only have two just quickly share 
Even if you just share it's my, what your favorite spider is, or something about silk, or what a protein molecule is, or how protein molecules change the silk for this spider. I'm gonna leave this up. Let's head into the breakout rooms now. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you realize that if you were gonna do evidence in a CR or something, you would say protein molecules impact traits of humans, animals, and spiders. Here's an evidence of that right here. Gossamer silk is extremely light and fine because of protein molecules it is made of. These proteins make gossamer silk perfect for gliding. The light silk catches the air but doesn't weigh the spider down. So this is evidence from the article that protein molecules are what impact the traits of spider silk. All right, let's keep going with our activities here. Now, what I want you to do is just create a top slide and just call it spider silk notes. And just for now, just write one thing you read about, learned about, talked about, uh, maybe about protein molecules. Maybe you could even say what a protein molecule is and it's here. Say something about spider silk and protein molecules or something interesting from the article. One sentence, that's all you need. I'm gonna give you about three minutes right now. It doesn't take that long. Open the slideshow, write your sentence. Obviously, if you're watching this video at home, you should just pause the video at those moments. In class, I will pause the video for you. All right, let's get back rolling. I wanna get this uh, spider silk done. So now let's scroll back down here in our last activity of the day that you can work on later or on your own. Look at this, we got another word coming up. So we were back here. You just read the about the types of silk that different spiders can make. Now we'll use a model to learn how, to, how protein molecules determine silk flexibility in Darwin's bark spiders. Remember the question, what determines an organism's traits at the molecular scale? We're starting to learn that. Protein molecules are too small to observe directly. Scientists use models to represent things on the molecular scale, which are difficult to observe. In the same, we saw this model of protein molecules. Today you will watch a video showing a physical model, which by the way, feel free to make one at home. It, it's been a while since we talked about this, but if you ever make something at home, that if it's a model or something cool or a poster or a drawing, it can replace your CERs. It can replace some of the extra slides we do. You can always get physical at home, work on stuff at home, do an experiment, video it, show us a model, anything like that, and show us in class or take a picture of it even better, put it in your slideshow, and you will uh, replace CERs. You can always do that. All right, this will help you learn more about the structure of protein molecules and how they connect with each other. Structure, we're gonna move that to the top. I'm not gonna do it now in the video, but remember, move anything you see like this, let's move to the top. Even if you don't work on it, or don't create pictures or anything like a concept slide, at least move it to the top. In science, when we describe the structure of an object, we describe its shape. For example, this wheel has a circular structure. These are the protein molecules you will, you will see in the video. The person in the video will try to connect protein molecules of the same type to make a strand that represents spider silk. Cool. Which of these protein molecules do you think will form the most flexible strand when connected? So look at these real quick. This one, this one. This one, huh? Which of these protein molecules? This one to this one, this one to this one. Which will become more flexible? What do you think? All right, let's dive in. Now this, well, I'm gonna show you about after the video. This looks something like this on your slide. Once you get to this slide, you can delete this, get rid of it, get rid of anything, delete that box, make this box the size of your whole slide, and then, when you get to this, you'll see I've been messing with it because you guys haven't opened it yet. And then you can go in and you, when it says sketch, you're gonna use these little tools. Look at this, line, scribble. So you can do some sketching in there like that. And you can write about it in here by just creating text boxes. All right, I hope we're not running out of time. Here we go. In this, in this video, video, you will observe, observe the hands-on activity, activity from activity, from activity three, 3 called Building Physical Models of Proteins from Traits and Reproduction, Lesson 1.3.
In this first part, you will observe the teacher building the example protein molecules from the three models. Now the teacher has built each of the three protein molecules, she will connect the protein molecules together to form a strand. In this next video clip, you will observe the teacher testing each protein molecule strand for flexibility. <laughs> 